Are you looking for a dish that is easy, freezer friendly and tastes really good? You've got my attention, then a pilaf. Is that the way you pronounce it? Pilaf, pilaf, might be the answer. Oh, a, re a recent foodie. <laughs> Do you not think Alice is going to tell you? <laughs> Alice Sazaski has a recipe she says is solid gold. Alice, did I get it right? Oh, Michael Rowland, in the words of David Brandt, are you having a pilaf? That was a terrible <laughs> delivery. Are you having a pilaf? Pilaf. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew I missed it up. Well, you know, funnily enough, there is a version of this dish in so many different countries that, you know, you could call it paella, you could call it pulao, you could call it plov, you could call it pilao. Uh, so you can call it pilaf if you want to, but <laughs> most importantly, just call it something and serve it up for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what have you done with it? Well, here's what I've done with it. I've, uh, I actually made this for dinner last night. So this is the leftovers from last night, which we'll be having for lunch. But uh, this is a version of this low chop dish. And all I've done here is cooked some rice with some aromats and I've used shallots for the version that is a recipe on ABC Life. And I've used shallots last night, but if you can't find shallots, then just a brown onion diced up or you know chopped up roughly and, and sweated down. And then the one that I did last night, because we had it in the fridge, was with chorizo. So it's kind of like a version of a paella, I suppose. But I used basmati rice, so any sort of long grain rice that you use for this. I'm sure you've got plenty of rice in the pantry. Um, you can even use jasmine if you wanted to. And then because rice cooks through the absorption method, which is that it absorbs water in, whatever flavours you have with that rice, absorb in as well. So even if you don't make this dish, let's say in particular, you know, what you can do is you can peel the carrots instead of chopping carrots. Ah. So you can see there's ribbons of carrots. This is the video that you can watch in total on ABC Life's website, but uh, you can pull the florets off your cauliflower and uh, pop it all into a pan, sweat it down. And then once all the flavors are sweated down, I've actually used as my spice, a little bit of uh, curry powder. Um, and then you pop some stock in, but again, you could just use water so you can see this is one of those dishes that's like a little bit of this a little bit of that and when it comes to the table it looks absolutely sublime oh, and the reason I call that. it gold that's right it's because it is so low fuss and yet it looks so impressive when you bring it to the table and you know the last thing that you want to be worrying about now you know we've all baked our sourdough we've all made our apple <laughs> Speak crumble for cake yourself. oh we've made the apple <laughs> crumble cake <laughs> yes so maybe what you might be looking for is oh, look, a little bit of cameo there from my spawn maybe what you're <laughs> up for there is the sort of dish that you can make with little little um, feet running around and lots of things going on in your head hey just quickly we started a bit of a uh, social media storm yesterday one of the reporters that we were doing an interview with said that she'd been told if 2020 was a food it'd be tripe with a double serve of brussels sprouts <laughs> and i asked you what you thought yours would be and we got hundreds of people messaging in including someone who said 2020 would be christmas lunch sprouts that had been on the boil since november the first someone else said <laughs> liver and crumbed brains with white sauce and what was yours what was yours alice well, mine, it's funny that you should ask because for me, tripe and Brussels sprouts, you know, I love offal and I love veg and Brussels sprouts are one of my favourite things. But I think that if anything, what this has taught us is that one person's favourite food is another person's most hated food. So for me, I had to think about one that was something that I would personally cooked and it was almost a decade ago on MasterChef when I tried to cook tongue in an hour and a half when it really does need about four hours. And it was a twice cooked tongue with a mushy sweet potato mash that I made. It was literally my dish. So, you know, I think it's more about the memory that comes with the dish. So if you are a Brussels sprout hater, I've got to say, power to the sprout, get your sprouts out and burn them. You know, halve them, pop them in a pan. There you go. It's all about the caramelization, bit of honey, bit of soy sauce if you want to add flavor. There's me teaching some kids to love sprouts on a phenomenon. And what you'll find is that if you do that, the um, the natural kind of sulfuric fartiness doesn't come out because you're not overcooking the sprouts, and instead you're bringing out the natural sweetness in a baby cabbage, essentially. And you can see, look at the faces on these kids tasting sprouts for the first time. <laughs> I've got to tell you, if you do serve up sprouts like that to your family, you will never have someone in 20, 30 years' time saying, Mum's sprouts, Dad's sprouts. You will have people that are sprout lovers 
for life. Oh, that's great. Alice, got to leave it there. Thanks very much, as always. All the best.